Good morning and thank you for joining us on Of The Press on PLUS TV Africa. I am Benny Ark and on Of The Press we get to analyze and take a deep insight into the headlines making the news in our national dailies. And joining me this morning for Of The Press, a public affairs analyst, Bolahon Lojede and Femi Idowu Adegoke. Thank you gentlemen of the press for joining me this morning. Good morning, thanks for having us. All right, let's, let's take it up this morning with the Punch newspaper. And we have the headlines in the Punch newspaper. Federal government recorded 4.62 trillion naira deficit in 2019, says the Central Bank of Nigeria. And Nigeria to begin rice export in two years, says the minister, and government to monitor five airports to tackle coronavirus. Federal government to demolish more buildings for Lagos Ibadan Road. Still in the punch this morning, insecurity worsening. We must act now. National Assembly wants. Equerry Madu plans to reintroduce state police bill. And Afeni Ferre wants, wants against Amotekun IG's model measure. Court hears same suit against DSS, Buhari's daughter, February 12th. Mother's son jailed three years for internet fraud. Emo speakers, seven lawmakers dump PDP for APC. And court stops sacked oil local government bosses from resuming. 15 died, 38 injured as truck plunges into Ogun River. And lastly, in the punch this morning, sex for marks. OAU panel probing lecturer submits reports. Federal government to demolish more buildings for Lagos Ibadan Road. And we know that um, there, there was um, a demolition some time ago at the Takwa Bay. And recently, yesterday, it made the news the, gov um, the Lagos State government is banning the popularly known tricycle or Kada and uh, Keke and then also a uh, motorcycle um, or Kada mm. across Lagos and major highways in Lagos State. What, what's your reaction to this, um, Bolahon? The, the bunny of the tricycles yes. and bicycles. And the, the tricycles cutters. and the motorcycles, yeah. Okay. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a complex decision, and I don't think that Lagos State um, has approached it, in my opinion, has approached it um, the right way. Why would you say that? Um, I, I am looking at the some of the problems that this is meant to solve, and I see that those gaps are still there. If you, if you live long enough in Lagos, some decades ago, there were no kind of means of transportation in Lagos, and we lived. But over the years, this gap has emerged, and it is this gap that the Okadas and tricycles have come to fill. What are these gaps? Let's, let's enumerate these gaps. We have new settlements where people have to come out from very interior places where there are no, uh, uh, um, but the buses don't get there. Is it because there are no buses? Buses don't get it because the roads are not accessible? They're not motorable? It's, it's, it's a mix. It's a, it's a mix of okay. things. There are an inadequate number of buses and vessels. And so as the city itself expands and the transportation facility do not expand commensurably, there will be a gap. Uh, number two, you also have situations in which there is bad traffic situation. So I, I get on, on, on the road and the journey of 30 minutes is going to take me two and a half hours. People want to be able to... Uh, take that off their schedule. They want to be able to have shorter means of doing these things. Yes. Um, so most of those gaps are still there today. And when these things are banned, without filling those gaps or without communicating the exact steps that will break this gap, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. There's also the fact that some of those people, you, you bring a whole lot of people are coming into Lagos to come and find means of livelihood from the north. And what most of these young Vera men are doing is riding Okada and tricycles. Now, if you ban them, does it mean they will go back to where they came from? I don't know. If they don't go back and they're still here in Lagos, is that something we need to think and talk about? I think it is. Femi, any thoughts on this? Yes, I totally agree with what he said, but I've, I would just have one or two things. Okay, I was thinking you would disagree with him a little bit on that. No, no, okay. I, I wouldn't disagree. Okay, given but, the fact that we know Keke, Keke Maras is yeah. formerly known here, and then also um, the Okada riders, yeah. they constitute the great menace on our road. No, they can't. Yeah, 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 say, yeah, I know that's the yeah. argument. That's the argument that they constitute menace. And there's a law. Yeah, and also that there's, there's, a, there's a statistic that between um, 20, 2016 to 2019, there, yeah. there were 10,000, over 10,000 recorded accidents yeah. by them. Yeah. And yes. deaths as well. Yes, in our general, in, in Lagos and the general hospital. Yeah. Yes, that's the legal, that's the, uh, the perception and what is on ground. Mm. But what I'm saying now, Lagos state government will come and say, yeah, there's a law that they're trying to enforce. The law has been in place. Fine. It's good to enforce the law. But reiterating what is mentioned, there's been infrastructural deficit. 
in the con in the state in the country yeah. as a la at large there's been population explosion people gravitating towards lagos for economic reasons but the growth of infrastructure the development and new towns development and infrastructure in place are not commensurate to the number of people so people saw opportunity there's traffic people saw opportunity and they created job for themselves yeah and then in recent years, maybe a year or two ago, we've seen more organized uh, companies come into the Kake and Okada business, and which I'm sure they got some form of licenses from the government before they went into business. Yes. So my own take is government should look, should have looked at the law and reviewed the law because you have not brought new or enough transportation system. Okay. So we're going to create more problems. Okay. Earlier on, on, on during our first news, we had um, the Lagos State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, that's a Bengal Motor Show. And mm. um, one of my questions to him was the fact that we have already registered businesses like the Go Kada. Um, what's going to happen to those businesses? He said everything on Kada has to go. Yeah, and so that means those, those businesses, because they're, they're small, medium businesses that yeah. are just coming up and providing job opportunities yeah. for Lagosians and residents in Lagos. Now, what do you think that the, the Lagos State government should have considered or should have done first before this outright ban on Keke and um, on Okada, which takes effect from 1 February? You, you, you know, I started by saying this is a fairly complex uh, decision yes. to make. Uh, it's not as if Lagos State is not making sense. I had the front uh, uh, plate number of my own vehicle pulled down by Marwa some few days ago. It's a reckless situation. Yeah. So they are a menace to the society. But you see, it's a balancing act. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't, that's why I said, I don't think the level of engagement that happened between Lagos State um, and people who are trying to bring structure because one of the main problems of this segment of, of the transportation system is that it is largely informal and unstructured. So these investors that you're talking about yeah. are people we probably could have used to put some element of structures around the this means of transportation system. Yes. And see how we can amend the law. The, the people are not meant for the law. The law is meant for the people. It's the other way around. So if the law needs to be amended, we can amend it. There's, there's no big deal about that. Okay. Uh, let's consider that headline in the punch <clears throat> this morning. Um, it seems the two chambers of the National Assembly, um, after their five weeks of um, being on recess and upon resumption, um, they're calling for security issues to be tackled headlong. Insecurity worsening, we must act now, the National Assembly wants. At least more people are getting on that board. Yes. Uh, it's not just the people mm -hmm. saying we are getting killed yeah. and kidnapped. So the president some days ago had talked about authorizing some bombing in, in, in some forest yeah. somewhere. And here the National Assembly also resuming, and their number one consideration was also the security issues. Um, <clears throat> it it tends to have improved a little bit towards the end of last year. But what has been happening, especially since the beginning of this year, yeah. towards the end of last year, was, has been horrible. And we must deal with it because most of the things we seek to do or to achieve, the government wants to do, Without security, it will not be able to achieve it. That's the reality. Okay. Let's go to the Guardian newspaper quickly. The first headline in the Guardian newspaper, court restraints sacked chairman orders from taking over or your councils. Tension as Emo Rec ignores CP's order to stop announcement of resorts. And federal government OKs worry Bonnie Seaport, Portakot Maiduguri Railway. 15 died, 38 injured in Ogun auto crash. A Motekun is battle won against imperial government, says Afeni Fere. How Buari outwitted Lawan disbanded new NDDC board, presidency to raise new management. Um, court restraints sacked chairman, orders from taking over or your councils. This is another defiance of um, a court order. Your, your reaction to these, and Bolan? If it's a defiance of the court, it's the court yeah. that restricted the, the, the other Yes. Yeah. So it means we have not finished this business yeah. in the court. Yeah. And the court, that's the issue. The, the matter is still in court yeah. yes. as it stands right now. Mm. Yeah. So if, if a court has given an order, mo most likely this kind of order will be an order that has an expiry. Mm. Okay. It's one of those 14 days uh, uh, injunction you know, that you get. So within that number of days, you're supposed to resolve what the underlying matter is. If it cannot be resolved, and one of the parties feel aggrieved, you go to the next level of the, of the court system. Yeah. That's, that's the beauty of it, until it gets to the Supreme. Femi. Yeah. 
I uh, what, what what is happening in your state? It's I don't know whether it's political. It's politicized now. It, it's beginning it to is. look it that is. way. Yes, yeah. it's politicized now. So, like he said, if the court order has time limit and they cannot resolve it, then they have to go to the next court. And we are we're yet to see the end of that. All right, let's take a look at the Nation newspaper. Malibu EFCC seeks a Tete's extradition. Agency files charges. Court restraints sacked or your counsel chief. And this seems to be across all the major headlines in the dailies this morning. Woman son jailed for $82,000, $517 fraud. Convict duped American. 41 die of Lassa fever in, in 19 states, says minister. 258 cases confirmed. Abdul Razak kicks against human trafficking. Insecurity, Buhari stunned as lawmakers seek action. President to go harder on criminals. Senators embrace community policing. And 15 killed as truck plunges into Ogun River. Court varies Maynard's bail condition and offer robbery suspects trials stored. Um, what should we put on, on on the nation this morning? 14 die of Lassa fever, 19 states, says 41, Minister. And it seems, yeah, seems to be gaining momentum, mm -hmm. um, affected states and um, recorded deaths. What What is our Ministry of Health not paying attention to at this point in time? Because Lassa is not a new phenomenon to mm -hmm. us. And so why are we allowing this get to this point that it is that we're, we're losing lives? We're count, counting numbers of people dying from Lassa fever. It's our way. Uh, that's 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 a reality. Um, our prepared, preparedness for emergency situations is typically poor. And we're more so, reactional than we're than, more reactional, than, yeah. than, than it should be. So we wait until some of these things. We knew it will come. We wait till it happens. Then we try to fix it. That's that's what we typically do. Um, what would change this mentality? Honestly, I don't know. But. We, as we are already in the midst of this particular uh, epidemic, yeah. so all hands are just to be on deck to stop it. Because the number of infected people uh, seems to be rising, yes. as we speak. And that is a major concern. And the, the, the citizens' education, the, 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 you know, telling people about the, the awareness, I still have not felt enough of it is going and on. And back for in, the in question, the where's the NOA? Mm -hmm. What are they doing to sensitize the public on personal hygiene, you know what I mean, environmental hygiene? Yeah. The National Retention yeah. Agency should yeah. be up and about this moment, letting the people about. know what they should know. Even the British of Health should have an agency on that that is responsible. This is a public health Health's situation, issue, yeah. and there's a, there's, there has to be a department under public the ministry health. that is public. But what is the funding yeah. that is available for that agency to do its Femi, work? Yeah. yeah, you have a two, your two sentences. Yes. It's a public health issue, and it's so sad that it has become uh, like a, a yearly ritual for Nigeria in the last four or five years now for, for us to lose people to Lassa fever. Yes. Yes, the vectors thrive in, our, in this environment because we're a tropical region, but we need to be proactive and not reactive. We need to put mitigating measures in place by the Minister of Health, Minister of Environment, and uh, the National Orientation Agency. I think these three needs to come together yeah. and then roll out a proper strategy and plan to curb this to various minima. We have lost 41 people already, 258 people are there. Yeah. On, we don't know how many are going to die on it. And it's rising, the, infect, uh, the spread is rising, it's already in 19 states. That's over 50% mm -hmm. of, 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 of Nigerian uh, yeah. states. Yes. So we, are, we have a, a coronavirus on our hand when it comes to Laza. Oh, let's take a look at the Vanguard newspaper quickly. In the Vanguard newspaper, Nigeria not in global social mobility ranking. 15 fear, 15 fear dead, 38 injured in Ogun auto crash. And Lagos about an expressway, more buildings for demolition over interchange flyovers. MTN Group to invest $1.6 billion in Nigerian operations. And insecurity, Senate opts for community policing, summons police IG, insists central security architecture has failed, House of Reps lament security situation, and gunmen kidnap 17-year-old secondary school student in Abuja. Amotekun is value added to our internal security. Um, that's an opinion piece by George Batokwe. And still in the Vanguard newspaper, House of Drinks makers battle for consumers' pockets. Nara depreciates to 363 um, to the dollar in I&E window. And also in the Vanguard this morning, federal government not fighting corruption to impress TI, says Lai Mohamed. 
and NDDC Buhari U turns says new bot ready after pro. Lassa fever claims 41 lives, 258 cases confirmed in 19 states. And in local government crisis, court restraints sack chairman orders from forceful takeover of council offices. Senate opts for community policing. Time we have that discussion. State policing. Well, home. State policing. Um, I think the community policing might be what will happen for now. Uh, state policing will require funding. I am not sure that there is provision for funding of state police in the 2020 budget. But it's example. become imperative, so shouldn't there be a consideration for the funding of that? Because it's imperative that given the, situa the security situation now in the country. So what is it? something that might then require a supplementary budget. But, I don't yes. know how we will fund that yes. anyway. But if we can have an effective community policing... Femi seems to be a good <laughs> lab this morning. Like. I, I, he knows what I'm talking about when it comes yeah. to money matters. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the last thing you want to do is arm a man and you don't pay him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, if you can make the, uh, the community policing more effective, it might just be a gap bridger until we get to that point where we can have the state police. There are still a few things to be done about state yeah. police. We can start ramping up on that, passing the necessary laws, yeah. getting the state to adopt them and all of that. And then sometimes along the line, we will get the proper state police in place. But for now, let's have an effective community police that will help to stem the tide of the security slide that okay. we have right okay. now. Femi, your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, it's, um, the community policing, I think uh, last, was it on Monday, uh, there was a there was a uh, directive from the uh, from the central, that's the IG mm. sending directory to directives to all police commands to begin recruitment and uh, process for community police constables. Yes, but they were eat up in that because some states said they have not gotten the directive. Some said they've gotten it. They don't have the implementation plan, how they're going to go about it. I think what, what we need to do now is to tie all that up and then look at already existing, because some states already have some form of community policing, how we can work in collaboration. Like in Lagos, we have Neighborhood Watch, and then the Amoteco is coming, is coming on board if they do the needful yeah. by having a, a proper legal framework. So, like he said, those ones that are on the medias that we can look at, then we look at the long-term plan for the uh, state policing. Mm. Because for now, right. our revenue is not, is not there. And now that's coronavirus is not affecting the oil price. Because I read somewhere yesterday that it's dropped. Yeah. So our, our revenue might further shrink. All right, public affairs <laughs> analyst, Bolahan and Femi, thank you, gentlemen, yeah. for your contribution on Off the Press this yeah. morning. Have a and that's much you can take on Off the Press this morning. This is Plus TV Africa. Join us again same time tomorrow for another edition of Off the Press. I am Benny Ark. Do stay with us.